Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. 1 Samuel chapter 9. There was a Benjamite, a man of standing, whose name was Kish, son of Abel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bekorath, the son of Ephira of Benjamin. Kish had a son named Saul, as handsome a young man as could be found anywhere in Israel, and he was a head taller than anyone else. Now the donkeys belonging to Saul's father Kish were lost, and Kish said to his son Saul, Take one of the servants with you, and go and look for the donkeys. So he passed through the hill country of Ephraim and through the area around Salisha, but they did not find them. They went on into the district of Shalim, but the donkeys were not there. Then he passed through the territory of Benjamin, but they did not find them. When they reached the district of Zuf, Saul said to his servant who was with him, Come, let's go back, or my father will stop thinking about the donkeys and start worrying about us. But the servant replied, Look, in this town, there's a man of God. He's highly respected, and everything he says comes true. Let's go there now. Perhaps he will tell us what way to take. Saul said to his servant, If we go, what can we give the man? The food in our sacks is gone. We have no gift to take to the man of God. What do we have? The servant answered him again, Look, he said, I have a quarter of a shekel of silver. I will give it to the man of God so that he will tell us what way to take. Formerly in Israel, if someone went to inquire of God, they would say, Come, let us go to the seer, because the prophet of today used to be called a seer. Good, said Saul to his servant, Come, let's go. So they set out for the town where the man of God was. As they were going up the hill country to the town, they met some young women coming out to draw water, and they asked them, Is the seer here? He is, they answered. He's ahead of you. Hurry now, for he's just come to our town today, for the people have a sacrifice at the high place. As soon as you enter the town, you will find him before he goes up to the high place to eat. The people will not begin eating until he comes because he must bless the sacrifice. Afterwards, those who were invited will eat. Go up now, you should find him about this time. They went up to the town, and as they were entering it, there was Samuel coming toward them on his way up to the high place. Now the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed this to Samuel. About this time tomorrow, the Lord said, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him ruler over my people Israel. He will deliver them from the hand of the Philistines. I have looked on my people, for their cry has reached me. When Samuel caught sight of Saul, the Lord said to him, This is the man I spoke to you about. He will govern my people. Saul approached Samuel in the gateway and said, Would you please tell me where the seer's house is? I am the seer, Samuel replied. Go up ahead of me to the high place, for today you are to eat with me, and in the morning I will send you on your way and tell you all that is in your heart. As for the donkeys you lost three days ago, do not worry about them. They have been found. And to whom is all the desire of Israel turned, if not to you and your whole family line? Saul answered, But am I not a Benjamite from the smallest tribe in Israel? And is not my clan the least of all the clans of the tribe of Benjamin? Why do you say such a thing to me? Then Samuel brought Saul and his servant to the hall and seated them at the head of those who were invited, about thirty in number. Samuel said to the cook, Bring the piece of meat I gave you, the one I told you to lay aside. So the cook took up the thigh with what was on it and set it in front of Saul. Samuel said, Here's what has been kept for you. Eat, because it was set aside for you for this occasion. From the time I said, I have invited guests. And Saul dined with Samuel that day. After they came down from the high place to the town, 
Samuel talked with Saul on the roof of his house. They rose about daybreak, and Samuel called to Saul on the roof, Get ready, and I will send you on your way. When Saul got ready, he and Samuel went outside together. As they were going down to the edge of the town, Samuel said to Saul, Tell the servant to go on ahead of us, and the servant did so. But you stay here for a while, so that I may give you a message from God. So we leave off with a a bit of a cliffhanger. Um, You probably know what's coming, but we'll have to finish it in the next chapter. But in this chapter, we meet Saul. It says that he was a Benjamite from a family of standing. His dad was named Kish. Now, I want to remind you, when we finish the book of Judges, there was this terrible story about the tribe of Benjamin. A man had been traveling with his concubine. He stopped in the territory of Benjamin, and um, uh, the Benjamite people of that city wanted to rape the man. They asked the host to send the man out so they could have sex with him. And um, ultimately, they ended up sending the man's concubine out. They raped her to death. And then the aggrieved party cut the body of the woman up into 12 pieces and sent them to all the tribes of Israel. All of Israel rose up against the tribe of Benjamin and almost eradicated the whole group. So for Saul to be of this tribe of Benjamin was a a black mark against him from the outset. Benjamin was the smallest tribe, and um, it says that Saul was of the tribe of Benjamin, which would make it clear to anyone reading this that these were not favored individuals. Uh, This was not a tribe that had been abundantly blessed. But Saul was, um, the Bible says he was handsome. He was as handsome as a young man uh, as any that could be found in Israel. He was a head taller than anyone else, so he was a striking-looking guy. And uh, as we read this chapter, his dad sends him out to look for some lost donkeys. So Saul and his servant go gallivanting all over the place looking for the lost donkeys unsuccessfully. And ultimately, uh, Saul wants to turn back and go home. But his servant says, hey, there's a seer slash prophet in this town. Why don't we ask him where the donkeys are? And Saul says, well, we don't have any offering to give him. And the servant says, yeah, I got a little bit of silver. We can give him that. So they decide to go find Samuel. In verse 14, they went up to the town. And as they were entering it, there was Samuel coming toward them on his way toward the high place. Now, the day before Saul came, the Lord had revealed this to Samuel. About this time tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him ruler over my people. And so when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, this is the guy I talked to you about yesterday. Now imagine the intimacy of relationship that Samuel had. He had an ongoing dialogue with the Lord. You know, the Lord not only revealed the future to him, but spoke to him in real time, you know, and said, uh, hey, this is the guy, Samuel, that I was telling you about yesterday. And so um, Saul approaches Samuel and said, "Um, uh, could you tell me where the seer lives? Samuel said, I'm the seer, but you're to go up ahead of me to the high place, for today you will eat with me, and the morning I will send you on your way and tell you what's on your heart. But as for the donkeys you lost three days ago, don't worry about them, they've been found. So all this is um, shocking to Saul, but it becomes even more shocking. Samuel says, and to whom is all the desire of Israel turned, if not toward you? And Saul answered shocked. He said, but I'm a, I'm a Benjamite. I'm from that group um, that was so, so decimated by their sin and, and struck down by the other tribes. I'm from the smallest tribe in Israel. And my clan, my father's family, is the smallest clan in Benjamin. So why could you say such a thing to me? And so nevertheless, um, Samuel talked with Saul and, and uh, dined with him and, and honored him before a number of guests. And then um, Samuel called to Saul, called him up on the roof and said, get ready, I'm going to send you on your way. And uh, they went outside together. Samuel said, send your servant on. I've got something to tell you. I've got a message from God. And there's the cliffhanger. We'll pick that up in the next episode. But imagine this man once again, Samuel, who had such an extraordinary personal relationship with the Lord that the Lord communicated with him on a regular basis continually. We previously have read that the Lord let none of his words fall to the ground, meaning everything the Lord said to Samuel that Samuel shared 
came to pass. And so he was an extraordinary man, extraordinary prophet, an extraordinary lover of God. For me, I don't covet his prophetic ability, but I greatly desire to have a relationship as intimate as he had with the Lord. And so I desire that for myself. I desire it for you. Lord, may we all know you as intimately as you knew Samuel. Lord, Samuel knew you under a lesser covenant. We know you under the new covenant, a greater covenant ratified in the blood of your son, Jesus. Lord, we want to know you. We want to know you as Moses knew you, as Abraham knew you, as Samuel knew you, as David knew you. But Lord, we all want to know you as Paul knew you and John the Beloved and Peter, those in the new covenant. We want to know you as intimately as we can know you. God, reveal yourself to us, not just once, but on a continuing basis. Communicate with us like you did with Samuel in real time, day to day. We ask all of this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.